What's up guys, JC once again, back on a new video for you guys today. Well, here we are with another 4K Blu-ray update. Uh, 2021 keeps rolling on, and as is my collecting and buying. And I've been watching a lot as well, guys. A bit of a side note here, if you're interested in a lot of the ratings that I gave a lot of these films that you'll see today, uh, check out my letterbox, I'll leave the link below. And if you're interested, yeah, check it out. Uh, also, I'm gonna be doing my complete collection overview. I think I mentioned that in the last video. I might push it back a little bit to maybe September, October, just so I can organize my collection a little bit more. Uh, because yeah, the shelves kind of, they're all up and they're all good. It's just, I gotta organize a few things. Uh, but today you'll see a lot of the stuff that I picked up from March onwards. Um, I know recently there's been Kino Lorba, Criterion sales, Arrow sales, the list really goes on. You'll see a lot of those pickups in the next one because I've still got to get those shipped in and stuff like that. Plus I did a few other deals of a few of my friends on here and you'll see that as well. So looking forward to that, but happy to be here. So let's get into it. Leave your comments below and let's get started. Okay, so the first film here, well first pile of films here, are from a variety of different companies. Uh, the first one here is The Descent. Uh, this was from the Amazon Prime sales. Yeah, I didn't get a lot from that because I had a lot of the titles, but there was a few things that piqued my interest. This was one of them. Um, been wanting to get this one for quite a while. Probably one of my favorite horror movies in the last 20 years. A lot of fun, about a bunch of chicks that go cave diving and end up with all these mountain trolls. Becomes like a survival uh, gore fest in a way. Directed by uh, Neil Marshall. I think he also did Dog Soldiers. Yeah, great film and really uh, rewatchable film as well, The Descent. Next one, uh, this is from Big W, which is an Australian company. They're kind of like a Walmart in a way, and they're kind of getting out of the movie game a little bit, but they still sell some Blu-rays and DVDs on the cheap, so I think this was under $10. Uh, Doctor Sleep, I haven't seen this film yet. I plan to watch it during October. That's when I watch a lot of horror movies. Um, love The Shining, as I've said many times, so interested to check this out and see if it's the same or even better. Uh, this is the director's cut as well, so looking forward to watching this in October. Dr. Sleep. Uh, next one, this is from JB Hi-Fi. Umbrella Entertainment brought this one out. That is Fire Down Below. This is a bit of a drama romance. So you got Robert Mitchum, Jack Lemmon, and the great actress Rita Hayworth. It's basically uh, two men caught on the same woman, and you know how that usually goes. So always love Robert Mitchum and anything he's in, as is Jack Lemmon. Been getting into him a lot over the last couple of years. So yeah, fun film, and definitely worth picking up Fire Down Below. Next one, this was also from the Amazon Prime sales. Happy to uh, pick this up and I actually just watched this a couple of days ago. Hellfighters with my boy John Wayne. Great film. This is one of the later John Wayne films after he did a lot of the westerns and war films. And uh, yeah, took a while to watch it and I really, really enjoyed it. It was great. Uh, just about, um, he based on a true story about a guy who goes around the world and puts out all these fires in oil, these oil companies. And yeah, it's really good. It's got Catherine Ross. You probably know her from uh, The Graduate and Butch Cassidy and The Sundance Kid. You got Jim Hutton and a lot of the other uh, favorites that John Wayne likes to work with, like Bruce Cabot. And uh, yeah, you'll know a lot of the actors in this when you see it, because John Wayne tends to work with a lot of uh, similar actors. But yeah, fun film, Hellfighters. Next one, this is actually a documentary that I watched last year and really enjoyed. That is The Last Dance. Um, great, great documentary about Michael Jordan and particularly his last season at the Chicago Bulls, the last championship that he won there. Obviously when this was all happening, I was only very young, so I don't remember a lot of it, but it was just a great, great show. I'm big into basketball, as a lot of you guys know. Um, and Michael Jordan obviously was one of the best basketball players of all time. This was great. A um, lot of great interviews of other players and a lot of great like footage of all the games and stuff. So if you're into that, even if you're not into basketball, I think there's something here for everyone. So great series and happy to have this like limited set of it, uh, The Last Dance. Next one was another film I really enjoyed from last year, uh, the Korean-American film Minari. Um, a lot of people didn't like this as much, obviously not as good as Parasite and Old Boy and a lot of those other great Korean films, but I don't know, something sweet about it. It's a family kind of drama about this Korean family that goes sort of in the, I guess, American outback, as you wish, and become like far simple farmers and 
just this music, cinematography, there's something about it I really liked. I liked the relationship between the grandma and the little boy. I think the grandma actress actually won an Oscar, uh, supporting actress uh, from memory. Uh, so yeah, good film and look forward to re-watching it down the road, Minari. Now another film that got a few Oscars uh, in the last ones, uh, I think this one won sound editing and all the technical awards for sound it is Sound of Metal. Uh, really interesting film, wasn't big on it. I know a lot of people on Letterbox really love this film. It's got Riz Ahmed, uh, basically about a drummer who starts losing his hearing. Um, yeah, it's technically really good. I thought the whole um, idea of that was amazing, but I don't know, something lacking for me. I didn't find the, the main character that likable. I don't know what it was, but I'm gonna rewatch it at some point and uh, see what I, uh, my later thoughts are. That is Sound of Metal. And then the last one from this pile, this was also from Big W, so this was under $10. I haven't seen this one yet either. Uh, Zombieland Double Tap. I actually really enjoyed the first one. I think that was back in 2004, whatever. Never saw the sequel and really cheap, so I'll probably watch this again during October. That is Zombieland Double Tap. That's that. Okay, so the next pile here is from Shout Select. They did a sale, I think, back in, uh, was it March, April, 50% um, off, and so I wanted to grab a lot of these titles. I must thank my boy in advance, because there's a lot of stuff that uh, he shipped to me, my boy Trini, Culture Trini. Uh, yeah, because a lot of these companies, unfortunately, don't ship to the US, which is kind of annoying, but great friend of mine, always happy to help out, so thanks to him once again. Uh, first title I've got here from Shout Select is Adaptation. A really interesting film directed by Spike Jones with Nicolas Cage. As I've said in my last update, been watching a lot of his films recently. He plays, basically, he plays two characters. The screenwriters, uh, Charlie and um, Donald Kaufman. There we go. Meryl Streep's in this as well, Chris Cooper. It's a little weird and quirky, um, maybe not totally my cup of tea, not one of my favorite Nicolas Cage movies, but it was okay. I must admit, Cage was good. Uh, liked, he was fun. There were some funny moments in here, no doubt, but I don't know, just something about it that I wouldn't probably go back to anytime soon. That is adaptation. Uh, next one here, I really enjoyed this film. I've seen this one quite a few times, so I'm really happy to finally get this on uh, Blu-ray. The slip cover here, are City Slickers, great film, just a fun family comedy western in a way. You got Billy Crystal in his prime, the, the legendary Jack Palance, I think he actually won an Oscar for this. Daniel Stern, just about a bunch of guys from the city who go on this sort of rodeo run to get away from their lives and family and everything like that. Just great laughs and had a great fun re-watching this a couple of weeks ago, City Slickers. That was a good one. Uh, next one here, uh, another slipcover, uh, Get Shorty, with John Travolta, Rene Brusso, the great Gene Hackman, and Danny DeVito as well. Interesting film, uh, sort of a mix between your Tarantino and Tony Scott, and maybe even a little bit of Hitchcock in there. I don't know, it's kind of interesting. John Travolta, this was kind of after he did Pulp Fiction, so he was pretty big back in the mid-90s. Um, Gene Hackman, he's good in anything. Just a really interesting film about the film industry in a way. Um, yeah, it wasn't bad. Didn't love it, but it's about a three and a half out of five. So that is Get Shorty. Next one, I really enjoyed this one. This is one of your sort of uh, rom-com type films, Valley Girl, another one with Nicolas Cage. This was actually one of his first films, like first uh, full length when he was the main character. I think he did a couple of things before that, but uh, yeah, a lot of fun, great soundtrack, and just one of those easy sort of watching films, Valley Girl, really enjoyed that one. Uh, next one, I watched this one quite a while ago. Uh, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, obviously stars Al Pacino. When I was doing a lot of my Al Pacino watches, I did see this. It's got Jack Lemmon, who basically stole the show. I think he was the very best in this. You also got Alec Baldwin, Ed Harris, Alan Arkin, Jonathan Price, Kevin Spacey. So some really good actors in this one. Um, I don't know if this is one of those films that you could go back to all the time, but just for the performances, it's worth seeing. Um, Really good Jack Lemmon performance, as I said. Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Next one, I uh, really enjoyed this one. I uh, watched this one quite a while ago. Uh, it is Murder by Death. And if you love whodunit films and murder mysteries in the vein of Clue and the Perot films, you're gonna love this. Just about a bunch of different characters who come to this castle. There's a murder, of course, and you gotta work out who did it and love those type of films. 
you got David Niven in this, Peter Sellers, Sir Alec Guinness, uh, Truman Capote, uh, the list really goes on. It's just a fun film and I love these type of films. Really happy to have it, Murder by Death. Next one, really enjoyed this one. Watched this a couple of weeks ago now. That is Nighthawks, fun film. I've watched a lot of Stallone, but this one always passed me by. I just never got around to watching it. Just a fun action film. You got Rua Hauer as the villain. Great performance in this. He really stole the show. Sort of your typical Stallone performance in a way, but still fun. That is Nighthawks. And then the last one, I really love this movie. I actually already had this on Blu-ray, but I got it, the Shout Select Collector's Edition of Roadhouse, Patrick Swayze. Damn, I've seen this movie so many times. Probably one of my favorite, if not my favorite, Swayze performance as Dalton, the Caller King. He's like a bouncer of these uh, really cheap and seedy bars. Man, this is fun. This is action, 80s at its best, Roadhouse. So that's that. Uh, next poll here. Uh, we got from Warner Archive. Uh, they had their last uh, 4 for 44 sale because they've been taken over by someone else. They're still bringing out titles, but I don't know if they're ever going to do the 4 for 44, which I did take advantage of quite a bit in the last few years. So I got a little nice poll here. We've got the first one here, The Accidental Tourist. This was okay. It's more of a, like a drama romance. You got William Hurt, Kathleen Turner, and Dina, Gina Davis. Yeah, it's just okay, nothing special. So that's Accidental Tourist. Next one, I just watched this one yesterday, uh, The Colossus of Rhodes. Really good sort of sword and sandal movie and directed by Sergio Leone. Yeah, this was actually his first film before he did the Dollars Trilogy. Um, I actually didn't know that for a while, but then when I saw this, I was like, hang on. He did another film that I haven't seen, so really happy to finally watch it. And this is quite an epic for someone who, their first film, really impressive. So that's Colossus of Rhodes. Next one, uh, Mark Hamill, Corvid Summer. Uh, Mark Hamill did this just after Star Wars, the first one. It's okay, it's just your sort of typical end of 70s road trip type of movie. This guy um, who's just graduated high school, they build a car and it gets stolen so he goes to Las Vegas to find it and he meets a hooker along the way, Annie Potts and just that kind of stuff. Nothing special but interesting to see Mark Hamill in another role besides Star Wars, Corvid Summer. Uh, this one was really good, sort of like your film noirs, you know I'm big into that. You got Alan Ladd, um, you know him from Shane and Edward G. Robertson, lot, great actor. He was in a lot of good film noirs and mafia gangster films back in the day. This is really good, highly recommend this one, Hell on Frisco Bay. Next one, this was also quite a surprise. I didn't know anything about this, so I just watched it. Uh, the Hidden, really impressive. You got Cole McLaughlin in here. This is kind of like your thing alien type film. Uh, sort of like species as well, I must admit. Really enjoyable, fun, uh, great, great action, The Hidden. Next one, this was again a, quite a surprise for me. Uh, love my westerns as you know. The Law and Jack Wade with Robert Taylor and Richard Winmark. Directed by John Sturges, you probably know he directed The Magnificent Seven and The Great Escape as well as a lot of other good westerns. I was really impressed by this. Um, you know, it was only like 90 minutes but pacing, the acting, the action was perfect. Really good western, I'm glad I've got in my collection. The Law and Jack Wade. Next one, wasn't big on this one, sort of like your horror comedy, The Man With Two Brains with Steve Martin. I think I said in the last update, been watching a lot of different Steve Martin because I do like him as an actor. This was probably one of those one-time watches, a little bit silly and comical, but it's okay. Um, the Man With Two Brains. And another one with Steve Martin and Richard Moranis, My Blue Heaven. Uh, Steve Martin plays like a gangster um, and Richard Moranis is the FBI agent. Again, a bit like Man with Two Brains. It's okay, uh, there's some funny moments, but not a lot of laugh out moments for me in this one. Uh, just okay, regular film, not one of Steve Martin's best in my opinion, but it, as I said, all right, My Blue Heaven. Next one, I got this one because of my boy, uh, Blu-ray man, this Lewis. Check out his channel if you haven't. Uh, he's really big into old uh, westerns and war films. He recommended this to me. Frank Sinatra, Steve McQueen, and Never So Few. And yeah, I was probably a little bit disappointed with this one. I know Lewis gave this a really high rating. Uh, for me, it was just okay. It's about a three, three and a half. 
Um, Steve McQueen, this was one of his earlier films. This is actually also directed by John Sturgis, um, like Laura and Jack Way. Frank Sinatra, he was in a lot of these kind of movies back in this period. Um, like I said, some good action, but wanted a little bit more in this one. Never so few. Next one, uh, we've got Reversal of Fortune. This one's with Glenn Close and Jeremy Irons. This is actually based on a true story about a, a husband and a wife, and it becomes like a murder mystery, and did he do it or did he not kind of thing. Um, pretty impressive. If you love uh, like court cases and law type films, you'll probably enjoy this one. Thought Jeremy Irons stole the show. He's always good in his movies. He's just got that voice and that sort of presence. Thought he was good. Glenn Close was all right as well. Again, probably like a one-time watch, but not bad. Reversal of Fortune. And then the last one of the Warner Archives. Really enjoyed this one. Running on Empty. Um, great film with River Phoenix. Great uh, act, young actor back in the day. It's just a shame what happened to him because he was, he was gonna be a big star. Obviously his brother, Joaquin Phoenix, is now. Um, yeah, directed by Sidney Lumet. Always love him as a director. I've watched a lot of his films now. You got Judd Hirsch, basically about a family who uh, fugitives are on the run and they have to go to town to town and keep changing their identity. And yeah, it's really good. I really found this entertaining and look forward to probably re-watching it. It's one of those films I can see me watching uh, every year or so, running on empty. So that's the Warner Archive stack. Uh, the next stack, here we go, uh, is from another company in the US called Hamilton Books. Um, this is a really good company that brings out a lot of movies on the cheap, a um, lot of releases of things that sometimes go out of print and stuff like that. So I was really happy to get this um, as well. First one here is Wesley Snipes in Art of War. This was just one of your typical sort of action movies where Wesley Snipes does. Nothing special, one of those conspiracy theory type films as well. Um, you got a pretty good cast. You got Ann Archer, Michael Bean's in here as well. Probably a one-time watch for me. I did see it a couple of days ago and didn't really catch my interest that much to watch it again, but cheap, Art of War. Next one, this is a Spaghetti Western, one of the better ones from Blu-ray Underground, A Bullet for a General with Jean Marie Vellante, who played the villain in the first Dollars Trilogy, the first two Dollars Trilogy movies, and Klaus Kinski. Uh, definitely one of the better Spaghetti Westerns. I really enjoyed this one. Um, yeah, fantastic. Check it out if you haven't, A Bullet for a General. Next one, this was a double feature. I had the other one already in my collection, but wanted to watch the other film, you got Face Off and Snake Eyes. Now Face Off, I'd seen uh, a number of years ago and I did have the singular Blu-ray, that one's with John Travolta of course, really good action film, but the other one I really wanted was Snake Eyes, uh, directed by Brian De Palma. I've seen a lot of his films, so that was one of the few I hadn't seen. Really enjoyed uh, Snake Eyes, it was fun, great Nicolas Cage performance and your typical uh, sort of intrigue of Brian De Palma. He always brings that to the game. So love both of these films, Face Off and Snake Eyes. Next one, this is just a fun kitty movie. Uh, probably didn't age well when I watched it a few months ago now, is Flipper with my boy Paul Hogan. You know him, Crocodile Dundee and Elijah Wood, very young Elijah Wood in this. Um, yeah, just in the vein of Free Willy. So if you like that or want to watch it with your kids or whatever, probably that type of movie, uh, Flipper. Next one, an action movie that probably a lot of people haven't heard about, but I've seen this one quite a few times. I don't know, it's just one of those guilty pleasure films. That is Kill Shot with Mickey Rourke, you got Diane Lane, Thomas Jane, and Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Uh, Mickey Rourke plays like this uh, hitman, and I don't know what it is. I've seen it about three times, and I just love it. I don't know, it's just a stupid film, but gotta love Mickey Rourke, kill shot. Next one is another one that I was really happy to pick up and get, because it's kind of hard to get this one. Uh, Lost River, it's directed by my boy Ryan Gosling, his first feature film. Really interesting film. If you've probably seen a lot of Nicholas Winding Refn and Derek C. France, a lot of that goes into this. You can see uh, Gosling got a lot of influence from working with those guys. Uh, yeah, it's set in Detroit. It's just a really interesting movie. Very great cinematography, great sound score. Um, yeah, weird film, but uh, yeah. Definitely if you love Only God Forgives and Neon Demon, check this one out, Lost River. 
Next one is another uh, Spaghetti Western from Blu-ray Underground, Franco Nero in Man, Pride and Vengeance. And this is a very different type of Spaghetti Western. It's more of a romance drama about uh, Franco Nero. He plays a soldier who gets obsessed with this woman and goes after her and chases her everywhere. Um, so it's very different to a lot of the p particular Spaghetti Westerns that we're all used to. but. Uh, Nonetheless, it was pretty good. You got Klaus Kinski, he kind of comes in towards the end and plays a bit of a villain type role, as he always does. Uh, really good sound score, but uh, probably not one of the better spaghetti westerns. Nothing like Django or The Great Silence or all the other ones I've talked about many times, but a little bit interesting. Uh, the Man, Man, Pride and Vengeance. <laughs> Next one was another sort of Western comedy. I'd say probably more of a comedy drama. Uh, McClintock with John Wayne and Maureen O'Hara. This was another one of the John Waynes that I hadn't seen up until now. Um, yeah, it was okay. Not one of my favorites. I love more of the serious and more of the Western style John Wayne films, but yeah, it is okay. Maureen O'Hara, Wayne and her worked with, in a lot of films together. I think they were Quiet Man, uh, the Calvary Trilogy, there were a couple of those. Um, the Quiet Man, which is really good. Yeah, so if you like comedy dramas, there's some funny scenes in this, you'll like it. John Wayne in McClintock. Next one, I really enjoyed this movie. Wanted to watch this quite a while ago because of all the great actors in this one. The score with Robert De Niro, uh, Edward Norton, and the legendary last movie, Marlon Brando. Great film, directed by Frank Oz. Uh, Robert De Niro kind of plays an old time heist uh, bank robber and he's doing this last score and he sort of teams up with Edward Norton who's the young and brash guy, sort of new on the block and obviously Marlon Brando kind of plays uh, Robert De Niro's partner and yeah, it's just a really good movie. I love Robert De Niro in these type of movies. Edward Norton was great and sad to say Marlon Brando looked pretty old and sort of sick in this movie but hey, he's a legend and it was nice to see him one more time in this, the score. And another movie, uh, A Score to Settle, uh, with Nicolas Cage. Again, just been getting into a lot of these Nicolas Cage movies. I don't know why. Trini actually recommended this one to me. And you know what? I actually had a good time with it. A lot of these Nicolas Cage straight-to-DVD or Blu-ray movies can be kind of shit or bad. But, uh, yeah, this one was good. I actually had fun with it. A little bit of a twist in there. Um, not your typical revenge movie, but I don't know. I found it fascinating anyway. That is A Score to Settle. Next one, this was a really weird and interesting movie, uh, Tsukayaki Western Django. Um, this is actually directed by Takashi Miike, who did a great film, Audition, and a couple of other good films as well, Cabin Fever. This actually stars Quentin Tarantino, he has like a small part in it. Uh, yeah, Japanese spaghetti western, I guess that's, it's basically a spoof of spaghetti western. There's a lot of like, uh, sort of homages to other westerns uh, like Josie Wales and the Dollar Trilogy. It's basically like a rehash of Yojimbo and the Fistful of Dollars. Very similar story about two towns and um, one guy, like a gunslinger in the middle. So yeah, very similar to that. Didn't really enjoy it a lot. The acting and the dialogue was kind of silly. The shootouts and the western action was good. That's about it. I don't know if I'd watch this again anytime soon. So that is Suyaki Western Django. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm probably not. Next one, I was really happy to finally grab this on Blu-ray. Really love this film. Not a lot of people talk about it. The Talented Mr. Ripley, based on a bestseller. You got Matt Damon, in, in my opinion, one of his best roles of all time. Jude Law, Gwyneth Paltrow, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Kate Blanchett, great cast. About a loner, about a guy who's not really a nobody, uh, who tries to take on identity of a socialite, of a, a Jude Law's character. Yeah, really sad movie in a way as well, but uh, great performance from Matt Damon. The talent Mr. Ripley, highly recommend that one. And then the next one, I was really happy to finally watch this. I don't know what took me so long to do that. Really, Scott. Thelma and Louise, what a fantastic movie this was. Road trip type movie, um, Susan Sarandon, Gina Davis, you got Brad Pitt in here as well, and Michael Madsen, um, Harvey Keitel as well. Damn, this was good. I really enjoy these type of movies when it's two characters together on the road and going through all these different adventures and kind of similar to a homage to Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid in a way. I saw the similarities in this one. Great film and I don't know what took me so long to watch it. Thelma and Louise, fantastic film. 
And now the final two here, I actually haven't seen these uh, yet. This is the four Timeless Westerns uh, pack. Uh, I think this is all on one disc. Probably really sort of B grade Westerns, but who knows? You got Rio Conchos, uh, Take a Hard Ride, Butch, Cat, Butch and Sundance, The Early Days, and The Last Hard Men. I haven't seen any of these. Got some great actors in all of them, so look forward to checking this out and letting you know what I think the next time. The four Timeless Western pack. And then in a similar vein, we've got a Western double feature pack as well. We've got Fort Yuma Gold and Damned Hot Day of Fire. Apparently these are two of Quentin Tarantino's favorite spaghetti Westerns that he talked about a few times. So I don't know much about them. Don't know, I think maybe Carlos, my man, Eastwood fan, he's probably maybe seen these. So maybe he can let me know what he thinks of them. But uh, yeah, check these out very soon. That's the Western double feature pack. Okay, now we move on to another pile, the second last pile here. Uh, first one here we have from Eureka, Master Cinema, the only one I got uh, in this period. The Spy Who Came In From The Cold. Uh, really good sort of old esplanade thriller with Richard Burton. He's done a couple of these roles. He was really good in Where Eagles There. Um, yeah, I think this is actually based on a novel as well, directed by Martin Ridd, who did some great westerns, uh, Ombre and Hud. Uh, this was okay, again, probably a one-time watch for me. I know you can get this one on Criterion as well. Really good performance from Richard Burton. Um, so if you like those sort of spy, conspiracy type movies, you'll probably like this one. The Spy Who Came In From The Cold. And now we come on to the uh, Imprint stack here. I've mentioned this company a few times now, Imprint Films. They're kind of a new company from Australia. They started up last year and now each month they bring out uh, about six new films. A lot of these haven't been on Blu-ray, um, so it's great to have a company similar to a, like a Criterion or Arrow in a way. It's just nice. So I've got a little bit of a stack here. First one I got was Alfie with Michael Caine. Really good film, this is a box set. It also comes with uh, uh, My Generation, which is a, a documentary, I believe, Michael Caine is in, and obviously the film there as well. So yeah, Alfie's just a fun film. He's basically a ladies' man. And he, it's all basically his adventures with all these different women and people he meets, and I don't know, really great performance from Michael Caine. This was one of his earlier films, I believe. So yeah, that was great. I think they did a remake of this back in 2004, Jude Law. Haven't seen that, but yeah, happy to have Alfie in the collection. Next one, I haven't seen this one yet. We've got Deborah Kerr, Hayley Mills, and John Mills. Basically why I got it. I love John Mills and Hayley Mills. The Chalk Garden, don't know much about this. Looks like a drama, romance type movie. A little bit of mystery as well. So we'll check this out pretty soon. A lot of these imprint titles I haven't seen yet. That's one company I really got to dig into very soon. Uh, next one, Day of the Locust. Um, haven't seen this one either. Um, looked very interesting just from the back. Um, Maybe a bit of a horror drama, I'm not really sure, but yeah, check it out pretty soon, The Day of the Locust. Next one, haven't seen this one yet either, Peter Lorre, The man, the Face Behind the Mask. Um, heard this one was really good, a bit of a, like an elephant man type mold. Um, it's only about 70 minutes, so it'll be an easy watch. Always enjoy Peter Lorre and his movies, great in the movie M and a few other things I've seen him in. So yeah, look forward to checking this one out pretty soon. The face behind the mask. Great one. Uh, another one, again, haven't seen. I know uh, Paul, my boy, Yasage99, and Trini, they, they've seen this one and like it. Uh, Fire in the Sky, this is actually based on a true story. So I think it's a bit of a, like a sci-fi drama. Um, yeah, it looked interesting. Um, yeah, so we'll check it out pretty soon. Next one, I actually have seen this one, really impressed by this, The Gambler with James Kahn. This was actually directed by, um, let's see, uh, Carol Reeser. Uh, done a few films, not a big time director. This was made in 1974, but wow, James Kahn, impressive, really amazing performance. He did this just after the Godfather films. Uh, and yeah, about a guy who's a gambler, of course, and he just takes all these wild bets and risks along the way and eventually catches up with him. The mob come after him because he owes them a lot of money and yeah, really good character study and I just love these type of films. You know, I love my 70s hard edge type thrillers and in the mold of Taxi Driver. Like I've said many times, I always love a movie that focuses on one character and that's certainly The Gambler. So highly recommend this one with James Kahn. 
And then we've got a couple more here. Uh, another one haven't seen yet, of course. James Coburn in the President's Analysis. Big fan of James Coburn. I loved him a lot in the Westerns, of course, and the war films. Uh, don't know much about this one. I think it's a bit of a sort of a conspiracy thriller. So yeah, be interested to see what this is all about. The President's Analysis. And the last one here, this one looks like a, a murder sort of drama, horror sort of film. Uh, Sorry, Wrong Number with Burt Lancaster and Barbara Stanwyck. This is, sounds like a little bit like Dial in for Murder, um, the Hitchcock film, which I really liked. So, yeah, been getting into a little bit of Burt Lancaster recently. Some of his other films, apart from Westerns, and they've been pretty good. So, look forward to checking this one out down the road. Sorry, Wrong Number. So, that ends my imprint stack. And the final stack here is all the 4Ks that I picked up. So the first one here is the steelbook of 12 Monkeys that Arrow Video brought out. Um, thought I had this movie on Blu-ray, but clearly I didn't. It must have just been the DVD. This is obviously directed by Terry Gilliam. It's a lot of a science fiction type film. It also stars Bruce Willis. You got Madeline Stowe. Um, yeah, and Brad Pitt, I believe. Is he in this one as well? I don't even remember now. But yeah, 12 Monkeys. Want to watch it again. And uh, yeah, pretty good film. Next one, this was the first time watched for me and actually really enjoyed it. Uh, National Lampoon's Animal House with John Belushi. And this was sort of the beginning of a lot of these sort of sex rom-com movies and I had a lot of fun with this. Just great entertainment, easy watching. And like I said, a lot of these films down the road, with Porky's, Last American Virgin. And of course, eventually you got Daisy and Confused and a lot of those 80s rom-coms as well inspired by this. So that's a great film, Animal House. Next one, also a steel book here. Um, great, great film, sort of your erotic thriller, Basic Instinct, and this is a great film with Michael Douglas and Sharon Stone, of course. I'm sure most of you guys have seen this by now. Uh, Michael Douglas did a lot of these type of films back in the 80s and early 90s. You know, you had um, Fail Attraction and obviously Disclosure as well. This is probably the best one out of the bunch. Sharon Stone, wow, this made her career really, um, you know me and my American Blondes, it's oh, so beautiful in this. Um, yeah, great film, I love Michael Douglas in this one as well, and happy to have the 4K restoration as well, Basic Instinct. Uh, next one, I've got a couple of these next few on the uh, Amer Amazon Prime sales. We've got the Blues Brothers, John Belushi, Dan Aykroyd. Haven't seen this one in ages, probably been over maybe 10, 20, 15 years. Been a while, so look forward to checking this one out again happy i got the slip of the 4k and again just watched this one fairly recently on a hangout actually with a couple of my guys bren and uh, hoax uh, the goonies uh, fantastic film great family adventure film uh, happy to get the slip the 4k blu-ray off the goonies uh, next one this was from jb hi-fi uh, a film that came out this year uh, nobody uh, Really fun film. If you love John Wick, you're gonna love this movie. Very similar type film, great action, and yeah, really funny as well, nobody. And then the last two things, a couple of 4K sets from Zavi. Um, yeah, exclusive limited edition of one of my favorites, The Sting. Um, I've said many times, I love this film. I love these two together, Paul Newman and Robert Redford. Uh, George Roy Hill directed, of course, of course he did the Butch Cast and Sundance Kid just before this one. I wish that these two did more films because it's just great chemistry and this is one of my favorites. Uh, the Sting would be in my top 50 favorite movies of all time. I've seen it so many times and I'm happy to have this limited set. Of course I've got the Digi book as well and I think it comes with a poster and a couple of art cards and things like that. But if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's really fantastic. And also another Ultimate Collector's Edition of a very nostalgic film for me. I used to watch this movie a lot when I was younger. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Um, wow, it's been such a while since I've seen it, so I'll probably go back to it uh, in the next couple of weeks and watch it. Um, Gene Wilder, fantastic as the lead character. And yeah, I used to watch this many times when I was younger, all the time. Um, it has a lot of different things on here. You got art cards, book, a booklet, a poster, a golden tip, ticket replica. So everything, family fun. I'm sure most of you guys by now have seen this film, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. 
Well, that wraps it up, guys. Uh, that's basically my update for this time. Hopefully you enjoy what I picked up. Um, yeah, really happy with a lot of these titles. Um, as I said, I've watched a lot of them, so if you want to check out the ratings, look on Letterbox for that. Um, and you'll probably see me real soon. I've got a, lot, a few things planned, and there'll be another update very soon with all the sales from the very recent, and um, collection overview coming very soon as well. So as always, take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.